As SpaceX prepares for Flight 7, anticipation builds around a game-changing evolution in spacecraft design. Starship Block 2. While Block 1 proved that landing these massive rockets is possible, Block 2 represents SpaceX's bold leap toward their holy grail. Full reusability of both stages. At the heart of this transformation stands Ship 33, featuring a complete redesign of its most crucial component, the flaps. These aren't just any flaps. They're the spacecraft's lifeline during the most punishing moments of re-entry, where temperatures soar to 1,500 degrees Celsius. The previous design showed concerning weaknesses during flights four, five, and six, but SpaceX's engineers have gone back to the drawing board, completely reimagining how these critical control surfaces work. Today, we're breaking down the revolutionary changes SpaceX has implemented in Block 2's flap design modifications that could redefine our approach to spacecraft re-entry. From the specialized heat shields to the radical new positioning, every detail has been meticulously engineered to push the boundaries of what's possible. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we bring you the latest developments in SpaceX's journey to make humanity multiplanetary. Let's dive right in. To understand the significance of Starship's new flap design, we need to step into the shoes of SpaceX's engineers facing an extraordinary challenge. How do you guide a 50-meter spacecraft safely back to Earth when it's traveling at 25 times the speed of sound? The answer lies in one of Starship's most distinctive features, its flaps. These aren't just ordinary control surfaces. They're the spacecraft's lifeline during the most punishing moments of re-entry. On each Starship, four flaps work in concert two forward flaps near the payload bay, and two aft flaps positioned strategically around the engine section in LOX tank. But here's where the story gets interesting. During Flight 4, SpaceX witnessed something that sent shockwaves through the engineering team. As Ship 29 plunged through Earth's atmosphere, superheated plasma found its way into the portside forward flap hinge. The temperature was so extreme that it nearly melted the entire assembly off the spacecraft, this wasn't just a minor setback. It was a clear message that the Block 1 design had reached its limits. Flight 5 brought its own revelations. While Ship 30's heat shield performed notably better than its predecessor, the forward flaps still bore the telltale burn marks of their brutal journey through the atmosphere. The engineering team knew they were pushing the boundaries of what their current design could handle. Then came Flight 6, where SpaceX decided to push Ship 31 to its absolute limits. In a bold move, they deliberately flew at higher angles of attack, testing the outer edges of their control envelope. Despite adding new ablative layers and gap filler materials to the flaps, history repeated itself. At least one forward flap suffered a burn through. This pattern of escalating challenges led to a watershed moment in Starship's development. The Block 2 redesign represents more than just an upgrade. It's a complete rethinking of how these crucial control surfaces should work. The most dramatic change comes in the forward flaps, and it's here where Elon Musk's engineering instincts played a crucial role. I'm so glad we finally fixed the forward flap design, Musk revealed. The old one was killing me. The problem? The original flaps were simply too large and heavy, positioned at 180 degrees from each other, a configuration that created serious issues during the hypersonic phase of flight where temperatures can exceed 1500 degrees Celsius. The new design is a masterclass in engineering elegance. Gone are the bulky parallel ground edges of Block 1. In their place, SpaceX has introduced swept-back flaps with a dramatically reduced profile. This isn't just about aesthetics. Every curve, every angle has been calculated to minimize aerodynamic stress while maximizing control authority. Perhaps the most ingenious change is in the flaps positioning. Instead of being placed 180 degrees apart, the new forward flaps are now situated roughly 120 to 140 degrees from each other, shifted higher and closer to the leeward side. This seemingly small change has massive implications for protecting the flaps during re-entry. The internal structure has been completely reimagined as well. The new flaps feature parallel faces, a significant departure from the old tapered design. This might sound like a minor detail, but it simplifies the heat shield design dramatically, reducing manufacturing complexity and increasing reliability. 
But what makes these changes truly revolutionary is how they work together during Starship's unique descent profile. Unlike any spacecraft before it, Starship doesn't glide down nose first like the space shuttle. Instead, it performs what can only be described as a controlled freefall, plunging through the atmosphere broadside before executing a last minute flip maneuver to land on its tail. This belly flop maneuver is where the new flap design truly shines. The smaller, more aerodynamic profile reduces the static forces that previously complicated navigation. When the flaps are retracted, they now tuck almost completely behind the nose tip, minimizing drag when not needed. Interestingly, while the forward flaps underwent this dramatic transformation, the aft flaps remain largely unchanged. They maintain their 180-degree spacing and traditional design, suggesting that SpaceX found their performance satisfactory even under extreme conditions. This asymmetric evolution hints at a deeper understanding of Starship's aerodynamics. The forward flaps, being more exposed during re-entry, needed the radical redesign. The aft flaps, partially shielded by the vehicle's body, could maintain their original configuration while still performing their crucial role in controlling Starship's descent. Looking back at Starship's development history, we can see how this latest iteration builds on years of learning and refinement. From the original 2017 Big Falcon ship design with its Delta wing to the 2018 three-wing configuration, and finally to the current four-flap system, each step has been guided by real-world data and testing. This iterative approach sets SpaceX apart from traditional aerospace development. Instead of spending years in theoretical design phases, SpaceX builds, tests, and refines rapidly. Each flight provides valuable data that feeds directly into the next iteration. It's a philosophy that accepts short-term setbacks in pursuit of long-term breakthroughs. The Block 2 flap design represents more than just an engineering solution. It's a testament to SpaceX's unwavering commitment to achieving full reusability. Every modification, every improvement, brings us one step closer to Musk's ultimate vision, making humanity a multi-planetary species. As we look at Block 2's revolutionary flap design, one thing becomes crystal clear. SpaceX isn't just iterating on spacecraft design, they're rewriting the rules of space exploration. These seemingly simple changes to Starship's flaps represent years of hard-won lessons, countless hours of engineering innovation, and an unwavering commitment to making space travel more reliable and efficient than ever before. With Ship 33 preparing for its debut, we're about to witness whether these bold design choices will prove as transformative as SpaceX hopes. The implications extend far beyond just successful landings. They directly impact humanity's ability to establish a sustainable presence on Mars and beyond. We'll be closely monitoring Ship 33's performance in the coming weeks, particularly how the new flap design handles the extreme conditions of re-entry. Make sure you don't miss any updates by subscribing to Elon Musk 24 hours and hitting that notification bell. If you found this deep dive into Starship's engineering fascinating, Give this video a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. What aspect of Block 2's design are you most excited about? As always, we're grateful for our incredible community of space enthusiasts who make these detailed technical breakdowns possible. Until next time, keep looking up. The future of space travel is being written right before our eyes. Hey everyone, welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Today we're standing at SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas, looking at what might be Elon Musk's most ambitious engineering achievement yet, the Raptor engine. This isn't just another rocket engine, it's the culmination of years of SpaceX innovation, pushing the boundaries of what we thought possible in rocket science. What we're looking at is only the third attempt in history to create an engine of this type, and it's the first that will actually fly. The Raptor represents everything Elon and SpaceX are working toward, making life multi-planetary. While it's not the most powerful engine ever built or the most efficient, it brings together a unique combination of features that could make regular trips to Mars possible. In today's video, we're taking you inside the technology that powers SpaceX's future. 
We'll compare the Raptor to legendary engines like the Space Shuttle's RS-25, the Saturn V's F-1, and SpaceX's own Merlin. We'll explore why Elon chose methane as fuel when no methane-powered engine has ever reached orbit. Most importantly, we'll show you why this engine could be the key to humans becoming a multiplanetary species. I've created simple animations to help explain these complex systems, whether you're a rocket enthusiast or just curious about SpaceX's latest innovations. This is Elon Musk 24 hours, bringing you the latest in SpaceX technology. Let's dive right in. The story of the Raptor engine begins with a challenge that seemed impossible. Back in 2012, when Elon Musk first mentioned SpaceX was developing a new engine, many aerospace experts said it couldn't be done. Building a full-flow stage combustion engine? Only two teams had ever attempted it, and both failed to create anything beyond test stand prototypes. The Soviets tried with their RD-270 in the 1960s. The Americans tried with their integrated powerhead demonstrator in the early 2000s. Both hit technical walls they couldn't overcome. But to understand why the Raptor is such a breakthrough, we need to start with the basics of how rocket engines work. Think of a rocket engine like a controlled explosion in a tube. The challenge isn't just making things go boom, it's about controlling that explosion with ultimate precision, thousands of times more powerful than a car engine, running at temperatures that could melt most metals. The heart of any rocket engine is its combustion chamber. This is where fuel and oxidizer meet, creating an inferno hot enough to melt through almost anything. But getting those propellants into the combustion chamber? That's where things get interesting. And that's where the Raptor shows its true innovation. Most rocket engines use what we call a gas generator cycle. SpaceX's Merlin engine, which powers the Falcon 9, uses this approach. It's like having a mini rocket engine that powers the pumps that feed the main engine. Simple, reliable, but not the most efficient. Some of your precious fuel gets wasted, burned just to run the pumps. The Russians took a different approach with their RD-180 engine. They went for what's called an oxygen-rich stage combustion cycle. They essentially created materials that could withstand hot, high-pressure oxygen, something American engineers long thought impossible. When they first saw these engines after the Cold War, they couldn't believe what they were looking at. But the Raptor? The Raptor takes both approaches and combines them in a way that's never been successfully done before. It's what we call a full-flow stage combustion engine. Both the fuel and oxidizer get pre-burned before entering the main combustion chamber. It's like having two engines powering one main engine, but using every last drop of propellant for thrust. The real genius comes in how SpaceX solved the materials problem. They developed their own alloy called SX500. According to Elon, it can withstand over 800 bar of hot oxygen rich gas. That's like being eight kilometers deep in the ocean. But instead of water, it's superheated, highly corrosive oxygen. But here's where the story takes another turn. SpaceX didn't just choose this complex engine design for better efficiency, they chose it because of Mars. You see, the Raptor runs on methane, not the kerosene that powers the Falcon 9. This choice wasn't just about performance, it was about the future of human space exploration. Methane can be manufactured on Mars using the carbon dioxide in its atmosphere and water ice from its surface. It's a process called the Sabatier reaction, and it's key to SpaceX's plans for making humanity multiplanetary. When you're planning trips to Mars, being able to make your return fuel on another planet isn't just convenient, it's essential. Looking at the numbers reveals just how remarkable the Raptor is. Its chamber pressure, the intensity of that controlled explosion, has reached 270 bar, breaking records previously held by the RD-180. That's like having the weight of three kilometers of ocean bearing down on every square inch. SpaceX aims to push this even higher to 300 bar. The engineering challenges they've overcome are staggering. Every increase in chamber pressure means better performance, but it also means every component needs to be stronger, more precise, more resilient. The tolerances are measured in microns. A human hair is about 70 microns thick, but these components need to be accurate to within a few microns while handling temperatures that could melt steel. The Raptor isn't just about raw power though, it's about reusability. SpaceX designed this engine to fly up to 50 times with minimal refurbishment. 
That's unheard of in the rocket industry. The space shuttle main engines, legendary for their reusability, needed extensive overhaul after each flight. The Raptor is designed to land, refuel, and fly again. What makes this even more remarkable is the cost. Traditional rocket engines like the RS-25 cost over $50 million each. The RD-180, about $25 million. SpaceX is aiming to build Raptors for around $2 million each. Combined with reusability, this could bring the cost per kilonewton of thrust down to $20 per flight, a revolution in space economics. But numbers don't tell the whole story. What's 